MB loses it, hits the floor, trying to save it. Ball knocked around. Curry, he's got the angle and the bucket. And Embiid is down. Joel Embiid is down on the ground. Uh, this will be the end of his night. He looks like he is in a great deal of pain here. Tyrese Maxey, 46 points. 4-3, Maxey got it! 49 for Maxey! This for a 50 piece. Got it. Yeah, honestly, you know, when I found out Joel wouldn't be playing, you know, I knew what would happen to him. Um, I was about to sit again on my ankle, not 100%, but I was like, man, I'm not leaving my team out there. I got to go out there, we got to compete, get one dub, at least on this road trip. Hey, y'all. Today, of course, it's Matt Rogers again on the Honorable Mention Podcast. Today, we have a familiar face, familiar voice, OJ Spivey from the Philadelphia Tribune, which is uh, the longest running African-American uh, newspaper in the country. Uh, OJ, uh, a lot going on right now. Uh, the, the news of the day being that reigning MVP uh, Joel Embiid is diagnosed with a displaced flap in the meniscus in his left knee. Word from Shams is also that he's weighing rest or rehab uh, or procedure. Rest slash rehab or procedure, according to two sources. What are your thoughts on all of this? This, this thought of should they shut him down? Kendrick Perkins, of course, was on television the other day, and others have said shut him down, and uh, you know others are more so thinking that he should keep going. Where are you on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm a little stuck in between, only because... You know, we don't have a lot of information to make a determination one way or another. And even uh, going one step uh, further, none of us are a doctors. So right. that makes it even more difficult. So everybody wants to, uh, or if you're a Sixers fan anyway, or if you're an NBA fan, uh, you want to see all teams have all of their players and, you know, be, uh, you know, play an optimal performance. Um, the Sixers haven't really had that all year long, even when Embiid plays. But um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards maybe shutting him down. But either way, mm. he's going to miss some time, and it's really a shame. It really sucks because you know I've been tracking, uh, as you know, I've been tracking Joel Embiid's um, season, and it's not only a great season. He's not on. He wasn't only on track to win his second MVP in a row. I mean, this is an historic season. Um, and he has elevated this game each year. I mean, I, and I know, you know, you bring the caveat in that, you know, this, this hasn't um, commiserated into the playoffs. Um, it hasn't, you know, been accumulative. Um, and, you know, they get knocked out every year, seemingly by the Boston Celtics, but he's really had a historical season um, for one, uh, he was averaging 36 points per game, and right. he would have been the first center uh, since Wilt Chamberlain to average 35, at least 35 points a game in a single season. That hasn't happened in 60 years. <laughs> uh, so that that's how remarkable uh, that is. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he came close a couple times. I believe he... Um, Average 34 one year, maybe 33-something another year. Um, but also, too, uh, even going back last year um, with him winning a, uh, his second consecutive scoring title and then getting the MVP, um, he would have been the first um, – he would have been the first true center to win a scoring title three years in a row. Um, it's incredible. Yeah. That, what he's doing right now is yeah, just that's, crazy. He's, that's incredible he's too, shooting yeah. whatever he wants. Right, right. And we're not just talking about your classic center. I mean, he's about as close to a classic center as you'll get in today's game. But you're still not talking about your classic center because he has he has an all-around game. I mean, he has a jumper. He can shoot the three. He has a fadeaway. He has a fallaway. You know, he can do whatever he can inside, take anybody off the dribble. Um, so, and it's really integral to what the Sixers do and any hopes that the Sixers would have had to maybe get past the second round. And me and maybe even a, a few other uh, writers were pretty confident this year, depending on the matchup, that they could 
finally uh, surpassed the second round because he seemingly had a, a, his best supporting cast uh, so far. Um, and then you see Maxie's ascension, uh, his evolution, being named an all-star this past week. So that was big too. And But they're just a different team without him. And, you know, they were shorthanded anyway, um, but it just really sucks overall. Um, but I, I'm leaning towards him maybe having surgery, but only only he knows. Um, and, you know, even if he gets rest and all that um, and, you know, tries to get it to heal on his own um, with rest and rehab, you still know he's going to be ailing a bit. So, yep. Uh, that's why I mean that's why Maxie's being called on it. It just it just sucks for for Maxie because you know he's he's really you know that he was on the right kind of glide path where he gets to come up being you know not expected to be the guy every night. And for the Sixers team, it kind of thrusts Maxie m- maybe a little too fast, uh, a little too quickly into that role. I mean, you never can create you know you know, the perfect situation, especially, and and what we do know about Joel Embiid now and the roster construction that a team has to do around Joel Embiid, you have to expect that he's going to miss a good 25 games. He may not, with the way that the league is setting this thing up, it doesn't seem like, you know, it's a good bet that you're going to get to, he, he will even get a chance to get all NBA honors or get, you know, MVP. So that's just the way that you got to, you know, build your team. Whereas maybe you really do need a, you know, another Batman. As the Eagles were talking about, they had a million Batmans. You really do need. You can't have a Robin. You need a Batman. You can't have a Scotty. You need a Kobe. Yeah, and, and that rule sucks. By the way, I, I can't stand that rule. <laughs> I mean, I know it was to appease um, the fan. The, I don't even say the mm-hmm. fan. I know it was mm-hmm. to appease television, um, their corporate sponsors. And I know, and I know there's millions of dollars uh, on the line just as far as, you know, seeing your great superstars and everything. Um, but I don't think it's really been a deterrent anyway. So, you know, guys are hurt. Guys are going to be out. That's it. And I, I want to add one more thing, Matt. Um, and B was under tremendous pressure to get back out that about on that floor. If we flash back to the previous week, previous weekend, uh, where he was d- ducking, quote, ducking uh, Denver. <laughs> it ain't even about Jokic. It's about ducking Denver, I guess. So I, I thought that was pathetic, too. Um, and even the Denver reporter who had the, you know, effing audacity to question his character. <laughs> and, you know, you know me, one of my uh, cardinal rules in journalism. One of my cardinal rules is being a writer is, and I always tell young people this, um, work the story, but never, ever become the story. Um, mm-hmm. So that's what I think what that Denver writer did. And, you know, it was just irresponsible for him to even, like, question somebody's character. And I never question when anybody says they're injured, when anybody says they're hurt. Um, until I'm proven otherwise, I always give them the benefit of the doubt that they are hurt. Um, because we have seen, too, my personally, I've seen too many stories, too many stories where a player has said that they've been injured and the team tells them that they're not. And it's cost them money. It's cost them their careers. It's cost them their reputation. Um, you have NFL players who can't get benefits, even right. though that's going through legislation that's going through litigation. Um, you know, you even have some NBA players out there who, who, who have struggled uh, with injuries post. I mean, they have a better, you know, they have a better plan. Baseball players have probably had the best, you know, pension plan and with benefits and all, but just for, and even some of the Sixers fans too, I thought it was pathetic when uh, people suspected that, you know, he's ducking somebody. I mean, this, this ain't fucking boxing, man. <laughs> and and what's gonna happen he's gonna lose i mean and then the, the the talk was like the high altitude he's out of shape it's like just like any athlete i mean the guy is the envy the league mvp right it, you know like the people saying that it's a it's a bad look um uh, 
Sure. I mean, I mean, I think I, they're, they're just I, ups, they're I, just upset and frustrated that he's injured and they just don't know how to articulate that verbally. Yeah, well. they just go. They just they just revert back to what other people say. And I'm I guess I'm getting on a rant with like sports radio and all that BS and stuff. <laughs> but they just they just listen to what other people say and they just try to mm-hmm. just interpret it. Um, but it's in the worst way. So that that's a whole nother story. <laughs> it it's the story though. I mean, I think I think what what you were saying earlier is the the guy that you were saying a second ago, don't become the story to journalists, and that's a a good cardinal rule, not one that's followed regularly. Especially uh, in this day and age, because you know, everybody has a blue check now, man. <laughs> c- c- you know that the the easy way to explain that is people are buying them you know that's, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> they're buying they're buying their coverage they're buying their they're buying their coverage in hopes that that'll result in access and, and, it, and it never will and the most dangerous thing about this man is the people who i see believe in these accounts or you know, believe oh, in absolutely. these people who are who have a microphone. The AJ or, Brown is getting traded, people. Yeah, the, or just, those people. <laughs> I mean, they're just they're just amplified voices where right. they say, Oh yeah, you sound good on the radio, you know, you have an opinion. He, you know what the you know what the most uh the biggest requirement to be a sports talk show host on a major radio station in the sports market? Have a strong opinion. Yes. It doesn't say shit about having a right opinion. Just have a strong opinion. That's actually in the job description. Wow. Have a strong opinion. I mean, that's they not say, hard oh, to yeah. do you for have anybody. To have knowledge of Philly sports, New York sports, Denver sports, but it's, it's not almost nuance, in caps. So. Have, nuance. Yes, no shit about nuance. No context. <laughs> um, just have a strong opinion. We don't give a shit if it's right or wrong. Just, have, just stand out so you can get a reaction. Yeah. Um, or maybe, you know, you can, uh, get a rise out of a, you know, freaking poll question, which are rigged. Yeah. You, you talk about elections being rigged. There's nothing yes. more rigged than a poll question. Yeah. You can, you can pretty much book it on some of these, but I mean, you know, it, it it's, it's kind of like, it's like sports reality TV. It's fun. It's fun. If you, if you have yeah, the time inter- for it, it's, 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 a, it's a push for entertainment, right? Yeah. It's and entertainment. We also, we also yes. have to remember with uh, ESPN, what are their call letters? It's it's entertainment and sports programming network. Mm. Entertainment is first, not sports. At one mm. time, sports was first with ESPN, but you know they're living up to their name as as much as they uh, more than they've ever have. So, mm. wow. And, and and here and here's just one more thing. I know I'm ranting, but um, <laughs> keep going. Here's one more thing. Okay, we'll put the poll up. Okay, should we trade AJ Brown? Oh, that's yes, ridiculous. We, yes, we should trade AJ Brown. Uh, no, we shouldn't trade AJ Brown, right? So the fans vote and they say no. Overwhelmingly, eighty-seven percent say no. We should not trade AJ Brown. What do the talk show hosts do? They go totally against what the people say, but they want them to call and so they can tell them how wrong they are about wanting to trade A.J. Brown, even though the poll tells them overwhelmingly, resoundingly, you shouldn't trade A.J. Brown. <laughs> that's sports talk for you. I mean, that, that that's the same BS that last year had people talking about uh, DeAndre Hopkins being the Eagles number three, like in the, this previous last season, it's like, yeah, y'all don't understand the way NFL contracts are set up. If the Eagles were to try to yeah. even for, in forget their the minds, cap hit, for, forget what you have to give up to trade, uh, you know, for, forget all that stuff, forget where you had to move in the draft, you know, forget all the capital, just, just make the trade because that sounds good and we'll get a rise. Um, out of callers and even people who don't listen to us, which, you know, I try to warn people all the day, you know, don't fall for the banana and the tailpipe. You're falling yes. right into these people and they love it. They yep. they You don't even have to listen, but just the engagement alone on the freaking poll question makes their show, makes their programming, period. Well, 
that's some truth that's some, a few truth bombs from uh from oj really quick <laughs> before we get over to the celtics speaking of the celtics they're they're out here jacking up these threes i mean if i'm the bucks i mean i i didn't really think that the sixers were really going to beat the celtics this year right right are, are you taking the celtics or are you taking the, the, the field in the east just in the east well logic will tell you to take the take the celtics take the chalk um you would think that they'll get it together because uh, they, they did look really bad against the lakers the other night but you know it's it's mid-season um sort of mid-season so you you kind of take that up and yeah, i think people were just so surprised that how well the lakers did more so than how the celtics did like you know unless you were a celtics fan um you know, they're a peculiar team, but we still base that. I guess they still had the best record of right now as we're speaking. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, uh, they made a major, they made major moves. They got mm-hmm. rid of Marcus Smart. They brought in Drew Holiday. Um, you know, you never know what you want to get some nights with uh, Tatum and Brown. You know, all these guys, are these guys certified? all NBA or are they just on the outside looking in some nights you never know some nights sometimes they look like the best one two punch in, in the NBA and other nights it's like oh man you know when are these guys going to get it together um but you know I, I, I still think uh they're the best but I think it's wide open it's, it's, it's all it's, it's still on another hand could be wide open because it's all about matchups you know they keep the number one seed they still have a good shot to come out of the east um, Indiana could Indiana get them? They could. Or would they, it have to be or have to be Milwaukee? Listen, I'm I'm starting to like how the Knicks are looking, man. I'm I, I'm I'm I'm, I'm really looking am. at them right now. Yeah, I'm, and I think they're <laughs> I think they're yeah. creeping up, man. Um yeah. you know, with your um with your background and everything, you know, you have that dark horse candidate. Yeah, nobody thinks yes. that can win or make yes. noise yes. in like a primary or something like that. Yes. The Knicks yes. are that type of squad. They're that they're that type of candidate. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll even take it uh politics before I made her in Philadelphia. No one thought yeah. she could win. Like you had these big name uh, big Mayor money. Parker. Yes. Historical historic figure. First, first woman mayor and one hundredth mayor who happens to be the first woman uh mayor. Um wow. And, you know, she was down on the field. You know, people had her at fifth, six. She ain't got no money. She ain't got, you know, um, this has never happened before. It's unprecedented. You got uh, multi-millionaire here, multi-millionaire here. You have a Hollywood star as another candidate. And then you have, you know, um, a financial guru candidate. And she just shot right up and that that's what i see about the knicks right now man they're Um, they're well built they can go seven deep and it doesn't really hurt them yeah and you know you throw in the coaching with thibodeau i would think by now that you know those young guys on the knicks will probably tune thibodeau out because that's kind of happened over his career um but you know they they obviously they believe in him um and also getting a college uh, coach Right. And also uh, picking up uh, Ananobi. So, you know. It's a great I, move. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great move. Gave him more size, gave him more um, defense, more agility. And Jalen Brutson, man, listen. Um, I, I got a cop to it. I didn't think Jalen Br- yes. Brutson was this. I, I, I didn't. I'm just going to be honest. I. I thought he was a good player, but I didn't know he could be the best player on a team that could be a legitimate playoff team. I got to give him his flowers. I was squad. wrong. He's on a perfect <laughs> squad where he could shine. I knew he had that in him, um, but uh, I just think he he it, New York is just perfect for him, you know. So okay, and you know, you know, the Big Apple loves their guards. So when yes. time they have a great guard, he's perfect for them. I, you know. But all uh, 48 days of Lynn Sanity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But uh I don't even know. I'm I'm surprised they don't really have a nickname for him yet in New York. But um, you know, as long as he's healthy and you know, with his supporting cast, if they can stay healthy overall, I would just say watch out for the Knicks because that, that's my dark horse. 
And you know how excited and, those and, fans got last year. They look, they seem to be uh, well positioned to be able to make moves, you know, even if they don't get all the way there this year. Right. Uh, right. Next year, be able to, to make a big move. And I think it's finally now become that attraction. I think this year they're kind of playing with house money at this point. Yeah. Lot, lots of traction. And going back to Milwaukee real quick, I mean, you got to see how it's going to play out with Doc Rivers now. Because, <laughs> um, I'm still trying to find out what happened with Adrian Griffin. There has to be more under the surface. It has to be more. Had, you had to appeal to onion. They more. lost faith that they. I, I I I went back and listened to interviews. They were throwing that guy under the bus. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, and it it had to be. If that's the case, it had to be really. It had to be that much worse behind the scenes because you don't pull a trick. At the time they yeah. fired Griffin. Only Boston had a better record in the NBA. Right. They were tied for second in the NBA with best record. So, you know, I would love to coach. I, I would love to have a record like that with a coach that you right. that maybe you can't stand. <laughs> it always goes back to. Winning with somebody you hate rather than lose with somebody you love. I don't know. We'll, we'll they, see. Uh, well, we'll see how that plays out. The public explanation. The public explanation at first. Oh, go ahead. Now, I, I I don't know if Doc is the answer. Um, if that doesn't work out, if Milwaukee don't get to the finals, what was the coaching change for? I, I do. Do you think that they thought that they wouldn't even get out of the second round if they didn't get rid of him? Is that what um, they, if they told you that as a journalist? Perhaps, uh, perhaps, perhaps. But now you could probably say with a new coach, okay, he's still trying to. Sometimes it takes a year or two to get your system in. Okay, uh, I I can hear that. You know that takes time. Not, okay. Not half a season, but again, it must have been really bad. But if you make this drastic a change and you bring in someone like Doc Rivers, Mr. 3-1, three, three, and what was he even last year? Three games to two? Yes, three games to two. Had him at home. Yeah. Two and games. Had him at home. I, I was And I was had him the, right where you wanted him. I was in the building for games five and six. And... Let me tell you, <laughs> but if that goes down in Milwaukee, mm. listen, mm. Th those owners are going to be paying three coaches. Doc is Doc is done. I mean, this is the this is the last stop on the train. You, you would think, but you know, M NBA the NBA loves Doc. I mean, he's obviously he's a good soldier. Otherwise. Um, you know, not in Philly, not in L.A., <laughs> maybe still in Boston, maybe, but because he that's where he won his uh, championship. But um, yeah, they Milwaukee has to win, and and even even more so, um, this is going to fall on Giannis, which is kind of crazy because he's already won a championship. Um, but you know, the worst thing you don't want to be labeled as a coach killer. So, so, so what is it? What, what is that blank or bust? How far, like, what is an automatic firing for Doc if they don't get out of the second round or what? They have to get it, get to the conference finals or they need to go to the finals. What? Well, mind you, I don't think that they will fire him because that would just okay. look so bad on the, on, on the organization, on the ownership. Okay. Um, but if they don't, why did you make the coaching change? Because Griffin could have did that. <laughs> Got to the second round. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Kind of kind of tells me, you know, kind of those things that you know my, my mother would teach me. It's like, okay, well, you know, I could have did that, or right. you know. You exactly. could have, <laughs> or I could do. I could do all bad all by myself. I was gonna say we're gonna same. get into the relationships again. Yeah, I, I I could be on the struggle bus by myself. We don't need two people on the struggle bus. 
<laughs> Both of us don't have to, don't need to be broke. <laughs> yeah, right. That's it. <laughs> that's exactly right. More more of this on the other side of the break, guys. We'll be talking about the uh the Philadelphia Eagles and uh another team in the city. One second. There was a lot of people, and I think even looking back ourselves that realized that we could have uh, potentially been a little bit more creative, I guess, offensively. And I think Kellen will bring a lot of that. He did it in, in Dallas. He did it, I'm sure, especially in the Chargers, even though I didn't watch him that much. You know, everybody wants to bring up the, the Ezekiel Elliott uh, snapping the ball type thing. Uh, that creativity didn't work in that play, uh, but it's not always going to work. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, he's been one of the best uh, offensive minds <laughs> Uh, in the game, I'm excited to see what he brings to the offense and how it evolves with him uh, at the helm as the offensive coordinator. All right, so we're back. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles went and hired two new coordinators. Last year, folks were not too happy with the performance of Brian Johnson. Uh, Sean Desai had some very, very good performances in hindsight. Matt Patricia came in. I don't think he had a signature performance. I guess until the last drive of the Seahawks game had a pretty decent game. They bring in two new guys, Vic Fangio and Kellen Moore. Let's let's talk about the defense first because I think that's what you know the people the people who care about the Philadelphia Eagles they think about this as a defensive football team. What do you think? The Eagles get their guy. I think that's the feeling is that this is the guy that they they've wanted. So how do you think it's going to go? Yeah, he was he was supposed to be the guy uh for this past season. <laughs> yes. Yes. Not 24. He's supposed to be the guy for 23, but we all know how that happened, you know. Uh delayed Dan gratification. Kept, kept kept his uh kept his job offer close to the vest, which blocked yeah. uh Fangio. And then he went to Miami. And I'm pretty sure Fangio at this point wishing he maybe shouldn't have taken a Miami job. But um I think Fangio is a good hire. It's a safe hire. Um, I'm not necessarily enamored with it, but, you know, he's a NFL lifer. Um, he's a mastermind of, you know, if you're going to get to play the Fangio defense, you might as well get the man himself, the namesake himself. So right. um, he's going to stabilize this defense, um, keep them from getting embarrassed, I think. Um, because you know they were embarrassed way too many times, absolutely, especially during that, um, you know, that that uh one and six record to end the season, having Kyler Murray beaten his 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 chest in in South in South Philadelphia, coming back, running for for on fourth down, it's a it was an embarrassment, yeah. That I was most exactly that was most saying. embarrassing for me, um, out of all out of like watching all the games. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, San Francisco, you you take that on the chin. Right. Um, you know, you see the road Back. games, you know, Dallas. Um, and then Seattle, you know, we may not have, be having any of these conversations if they beat Seattle. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's complicated to why we got to this point. And just going back to Fangio real quick, he'll stabilize the defense, keep him from getting embarrassed. Um, he's going to restore order, so to speak. Restoring order, yes. So he's going to put them back to at least being an average defense. You, you can count on that just by his presence. Um, mm -hmm. Calvary's going to get him a couple players, um, but it's still going to be relying on a pass rush. And you have to, you have to, um, you have to double down and, uh, Dig deep, dig deep, and invest heavily in Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis's success. As far as getting the by getting the linebackers, because once they eat up the double teams, somebody's got to get in there and fill the correct gaps. That's how these things work in the game of football. Right. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, and I think with linebackers, they're not going to really have a choice because. Um, even though Nicobe Dean was a third round pick, he's a guy that they he's a guy that they selected. Um, he's a guy that they oh, gave yeah. the, the green dot to. So 
He's going to be there uh, next year. Cunningham? Um, so you're thinking Cunningham is back too? I don't think so because they're, it's, it's Cunningham was solid for most of the yes. season. Yes. But he's a free agent. And yes. if Fangio is going to be successful in his defense, they're going to have to get out, go out and get a linebacker. Coverage linebacker. Some, some people are. Coverage guy, though. Some people are. Cunningham's a, him's a thumper. Right. Some people are thinking yeah. that, oh, yeah, you get a linebacker in a draft. Um, no, that's N'Kobe Dean. That's your that's your linebacker. That that's your draft D. Um, because they're not gonna take a linebacker high. Um, but I think they're gonna go out and get someone. Does a what Roquan, the Giants paid? Oh, go ahead. Does a Roquan Smith um fit in this defense? Because if he does in any way, that's somebody you go out and get to make a splash. You know, I mean we, Roquan to fit a lot a lot of places. Yes, right, exactly. Well, you make them fit. You know he's he's a he's a free agent. Um, right. He's like the number one guy on my radar. So if the Eagles are serious about um, improving his defense, you have to get that type of guy. Um, Look at the people who are still playing. Right, the Final Four people who were still playing. They they invested in that position, and I and, and I know, love it, Matt, because defense has now um, equalized the game. Yes, and if my you know, I'll have to look back and, and check and somebody can fact check for me. I believe scoring was down overall this year in the NFL. Yes. And that's that's because of defense. Yes. That's yes. because you have that's because you have linebackers who can run and hit. How even yes. mentioned that in his end of year press conference, you know, having guys that can run and hit. Come on. It's basic. And for and for it's me tackling. And the me, will of a right. man you, to, you, stop, you, to go you, through another man. <laughs> right. You talk about uh, what do they always say in football? It's the century old cliche blocking and tackling. Yes. When you talk about defense, you got to be able to run and hit. That That's that's my thing. You know, that never goes Sounds out. foundational. Top. Yeah. Being able to run and run and hit. So they have to get a linebacker in here who can do all those things. Um, so if they're serious, they'll, they'll they'll do that. But again, Fangio, he's going to come stabilize and restore order to this defense because I think that's what Jeffrey Lloyd was most embarrassed about. Are you this the only season that can, that comes to mind in my because I'm a younger man by you know just a year or two than you, OJ? Um, <laughs> of course. Uh, so the most embarrassing year was when the Eagles, uh, the 2014 before this season for me. The 2014 Eagles. They started, I think they they started nine and three and missed the playoffs with uh that was the Mark Sanchez right. for this season. Wh which one are you going with? M mine, I gotta say that this one is more embarrassing. Or do you have another one, maybe even more? That's like a bigger collapse. I mean, I go back, you know, much further than that. But if we're talking about you know the last decade or two, I would say so. Um, that this year was more. Um, more egregious because this was more historic. You know, you go back to that 2014 team, nobody really expected them to do much, especially with Mark no. Sanchez at quarterback. So, um, you know, the expectations were fairly low considering. Um, but um, you look you look back at this year, you know, they were the first team since the 86 Jets to start 10 and 1. And then lose seven games, or even further, not even um, win the division. To win the division, they were first team since the '86 Jets not to do that. To go ten and one, and then how? How is it humanly possible to not win your division after you go ten and one? You got Kyler meet Murray coming. The, the back division was given to them for several weeks. <laughs> yes. Where all they yes. had to do was win one game, and you had to do it. Okay, and, and we kept we kept looking at it. It's okay, yeah. You're saying in the press box, okay, yeah, they got to win today. You know, they'll they'll win today. They got to win today to go to the division. Then we'll figure out. Um, you know, we still don't know who this team is, but they're gonna win today. Yeah, this won't gotta, mean that yeah. much to me. I'll write it off, but they're gonna win today. Was the and, story, and I, <laughs> and I thought more than anything that they would it be Arizona, but. Come on. It, 
It it just it just didn't. I even thought that they were going to beat Arizona when they started out slow, but Sidney Brown ran back that interception. Yes, but you know here here we are. Um, but real quick, Kellen Moore. I'm okay with him. Um, and you know this is far beyond like fandom because I know say oh yeah he's a cowboy everything like that even hey, though I he mean, just came silly. from L.A. Um, you know, I'll take I Micah think... Parsons too. <laughs> yes, yes, um, but I think he'll be fine uh, with the passing game. Um, you know, I, I I do think this is a little tricky with how they're going to how he's going to work with Jalen, but I will say that for fans who expect the Eagles to run the ball more, Oof. that's not going to happen. No. That's that's not going to happen. And forget what you saw at Dallas and everything. Kellen Moore is probably the perfect guy. I won't say the perfect guy. He's probably an ideal guy for what the Eagles want to do uh, with passing. Yes. But you'll probably see more yes. motion and everything. And they have to bring back the RPO. Some mm-hmm. experts are saying that team, like we were just talking about linebackers, you know, um, playing well and possibly they were possibly taking away the RPO options this year with a lot of teams, but they yeah. got to bring that back in some form. And they worry too much about Jalen's health this year and they have to get out of it. They got to let Jalen Hurst be Jalen and just let it ride. Because if you let Jalen be Jalen, this past year, they won the division at least. I mean, I, I, the, the, one of the biggest things I talk about when I talk about a football team is the backup quarterback. Marcus Mariota this year, I, I think, you know, in the back of your mind, you got to be able to, as a team, when you, when the 53 go out there, or however many can dress, they need to feel that the, the, if, if Jalen goes down for, you know, the back half of this game, that that we are even or that the game isn't automatically over and i think that that has a lot to do with it i think they were trying to coach they were trying to scheme health yeah you can't you can't scheme health it's it's like a it's like you're being you being a player you being an athlete and you're going out on the field um just hoping that you don't get hurt that that's a no-no because if you're worried about getting hurt you're going to get hurt because you know the collisions find you, um, the the bad part of the turf finds you, the turf monster finds you, all those times, you know, that that lets me know that they're, and you saw that early in the season, but they were able to get away with it because you, yes. caught, you saw Jalen getting the ball or, you know, it might be a broken play and he just goes down. Yep. And Sirianni even admitted it that, you know, we wanted him to, preserve his health um but you can't play football like that you you can't and what it does also is make it makes the defense easier to scheme against you yes because jalen's not they're running this rpo action let's just he's not running we know that he's not running so don't even it, it kind of takes the checks off a couple boxes for the defense like a fred warner when you're playing against san francisco or these right. other good teams. And, and i'm bre- glad you brought up san francisco because all you had to do is just look back at the 2022 nfc championship game when the eagles did knock out brock purdy um but what no one talks about in that game is how they had that entire san francisco defense confused it was similar to what yeah. detroit did yes of running the football yes. um because you look at what they did with uh kenny gangwell with what they did with miles sanders and a championship game uh last season um there was a an nfl films they spotlighted this and i yes. remember with the rpo um and they 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 singled out fred warner who's you know all pro all world and he is again this yeah. year with, yes. with what the Eagles did with the RPO last year was when Jalen received the ball and you saw he and Miles Sanders, you know, next to each other, Fred Warner was frozen for at least three seconds. Yes. Yes. He was basically, he was basically still in his stance for a good three seconds. 
he because you have to not, respect it. He did not know where to go. All pro Fred Warner, you know. So they had to get back to that type of offense. So what is that going to look like under un, under Kellen Moore? People are talking about, oh yeah, all this motion, everything. What do you want to do with the running game? What are you going to do with RPOs? That's going to be my initial concern because they had to bring that back in some form if you want to get the most out of Jalen. And like I said to you before, Matt, Jalen threw the ball more than he ever has in his life. Yes. This yes. Season. And it was way yes. too much. Well, they and they were also like one yard dump offs, you know, to Dallas Goddard right next to Lane Johnson on a tight end screen. Right. Or I mean that right. that was technically a throw, but it's like he's not getting and he did have most uh yard uh, distance to target this season. I don't want to undersell as if he was just dinking and dunking all season, but some of these throws were just they, yeah, they were was, design a, losers. Yeah, it was a scheme. Yeah, it was a scheming. So, you know, that goes back. That to, falls on Nick, too, because Nick, Nick took it. He said they, they, they were running his offense. So, right, right. Ellen, clean it up. And this is why I hope um, I hope Brian Johnson does get an offensive coordinator job because we'll mm-hmm. really get to see the real Brian Johnson. How much was he handcuffed by Nick Sirianni? And is he a good yeah. offensive coordinator? Um, so I know, uh, he's had a few interviews, nothing has worked out yet, but, um, I hope he falls on his feet as an offensive coordinator, because I really want to see the real Brian Johnson, because in my opinion, um, I think way too much fell on him is it was a collect, it was a collective organizational failure. And, you know, this city, Matt, you know, this fan base, we all have to, we all need a villain. You know, yep. you all have to identify a villain, identify a suspect. Yep. Arrest them and convict them. <laughs> what this We're acting real about? cowboyish. You know what? Yeah. This is the all of this is very cowboyish, folks. This right. is the collapse in all of it. And then you have to have somebody to scapegoat somebody. This so cowboy has, behavior. Have to have somebody to blame. <laughs> it has to be him. It has to be either him, him. Has to be him. Somebody got to take the fall. And that's I'm not sorry. Always, it won't be popular, but it's true. Yeah, that's but. not all. That's that's not always fair, and a lot of times it's just narrow minded. Mm. So well. So it, when we go back out there in the summer for their Eagles training camp and watch the guys run around, are we going to see Julio Jones out there? Do you expect to see Julio Jones? Um, probably not. Um. And my thought is, I I, I really believe, and, and I might have mentioned this before, but I really believe that they underutilize Alameda to Zacchaeus. Yeah, uh, he's a better wide receiver than how they utilized him. Yes, um, you saw some flashes from him, um, and why they didn't put him in motion, uh, why did why they didn't have him in as a hot read? Right. I just, I just hope that you know we probably won't see Julio Jones because. You know, he he doesn't have much left. He he just doesn't. Um, and you just hope that you don't have Quez. Well, Quez is not going to be here because his contract's up. So, um, but I would love to see. It's going to be hard to get a, 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 a legit number three in here. I got to see what the free agent list looks like because the Eagles do have so many needs, especially on defense. But if he doesn't ask for a lot, I, I think Zacchaeus – or Oz, as you know, everybody calls him. I think he would be an ideal threat um, across the middle. He some of the best plays of the season last season were yeah. throws from Jalen to to Oz. Yeah, I, in the I, Bucks I, game, the crosser, the one in the the Bills game, where Jaylen yeah, I really like him. And, you know, he he is he worked hard in camp, worked hard in practice, and everything. I, I believe he deserves another shot to be the Eagles' third receiver. And you'll probably be able to get him on on the cheap. If, I believe oh, he's yeah. a free agent, but uh, oh yeah, it yeah, was a one year deal, right? So you'll be able to get him on the cheap. He's not gonna he's not gonna command a lot of money elsewhere. You still feeling like they gonna give it a try to bring Swift back? They should, but and. and, and 
<laughs> people aren't gonna like this either. I like Swift, mm -hmm. but I thought the offense ran better with Sanders. Wow. Do you think that's Sanders or you think that's coordination? And I think they I think that was Sanders. I, I just think that he mm. I just think that the offense flowed better. Um, and that's no knock on Swift. That was for me, that was like, if it ain't broke, don't break it. <laughs> yeah, everybody said don't it. fix it. Yeah, and but Sanders if it ain't broke, out of don't there. break it. <laughs> <laughs> And again, but call it fixing it and you break it. Right. And I had talked to Sanders in the last year, um, you know, last couple games, like, you know, NFC Championship. Because uh, you could tell playoffs, when he blew kisses in the NFC he Championship. He wanted, he, he wanted to stay in Philadelphia badly. And he was not going to command a lot of money, too. It was almost like the TJ Edwards thing. Um, exactly. But what are you going to oh, – so I'm past that now. That's water under the bridge. So what are we going to pay Swift or we're going to bring him back? But Swift deserves a raise, too. Because he, yeah, he, he, he made a Pro Bowl. Yeah, right. Exactly. So that's incentive. So that's on your resume right there. You know, I'm a Pro Bowl running back. And yeah. he could have, he probably wouldn't have beat McCaffrey for the rushing title. But if he wasn't utilized more, he could have had 1,300 yards easy. And he can handle the load. He handled the load last when whenever there was load to be given. He stayed and he stayed healthy for the most for yes. he stayed healthy for the first time in his career, even though he was underutilized. But it, it just all depends on how much how much he's going to ask for. But he has earned to right to ask for Miles Sanders money, if not more. And I you can't blame him. And I know it's, there's going to be some type of campaign saying oh yeah you know swift is asking for too much you know players always ask in, in the eyes of fans and and some dumbass media here you and can't stuff. compare it to what you make as a yeah it's like oh yeah you know he's asked he's not worth that day. he's asked for too much sure same way same way miles sanders earned his raise right deandre swift has earned his and you have to respect that if he if if someone else gives him the money but that's going to be yeah. a bigger problem if they don't um, resign Swift, because who's out who's out there that you're going to sign as a free agent? Because um, Kenny Gainwell can't handle the load. Um, who are you going to get as a free agent? I don't think it's a great running back draft, unless you know they um, diamonds in a rough like Kenny Gainwell was. Yeah, I guess they do a you know. Maybe do a bargain basement thing, get somebody in the third or fourth round. You know, they do have the picks to do it. Um, and even just with the draft, you know, you can almost count on they're either going to get a, they're either going to get an offensive lineman or they're going to get an a edge rusher. You can count on that. Right. Right. That's what they do. Yeah. That's how they build the team every year. I mean, did, what what happened with Penny? I mean, he ended up just getting nothing. This no no carries. I mean, he just fell out of favor. Yeah, that's that's all the more reason why resigning Swift is going to be going to be critical because he's still a mystery. The only thing that I heard, and this wasn't even confirmed, that. Uh, Penny just wasn't good at picking up the blitz or picking up the offense or or something along those lines, but that was never okay. confirmed. Um, okay. or I could I couldn't confirm it. Um, yeah, that's the only thing that I that I, I could put my finger on. Um, but you know, even though they're not going to run the ball, you have to have somebody in this position, so yeah, that's that's going that's probably the most intriguing, the most intriguing off off uh offensive move off season offensive move that the eagles will have absolutely so before we go oj uh if if dombrowski's willing to go and purge into you know that that bank account a little more and add on to this phillies team he's tired of it he's sick and tired he's going to you know do what he's got to do what would you what would you like to see him do to add to this phillies team well, 
I don't think you're going to see anything drastic or anything different with the starting lineup. I just think it is what it is. And you just hope that uh, Bryce Harper can stay healthy and he can play maybe 145, 150 games mm -hmm. um, at uh, first base. So you want right. to count on that. Obviously, they couldn't move Castellanos. Um, yep. I thought that was going to be a tough – That's that was going to be tough. Um, yeah. You have another year, Schwarber. Uh, I, I think the key is uh, Rojas. I believe he should yep. start center field. You just yes. got to let that kid grow. Please. Let him let learn him. how to hit. Bryson yeah. Scott was just struggling at the dish. But that wasn't too long ago, folks. <laughs> Yeah, and everybody, everybody talks about, oh, yeah, you know, Rojas can't hit and everything. Well, they still hit under 200 as a team uh, this past off Schwarber. Season. They hit under 200. <laughs> <laughs> and they hit about under, the park. <laughs> and when they lost to the Astros in a World Series, why did they yes. lose? Rojas yes. wasn't even here yet. They still right. batted under the Mendoza line. Come on. What, come they on. had one of the worst batting averages in <laughs> World Series history as a team. You got and no hit at home. Where was Rojas? Right. And that was part of it. Right. That was part of it. Um, but, yeah, you just got to let the kid play. And, you know, you just hope he'll get it because he's too valuable defensively. And if he can hit just a little bit, that's who you put at the top I need of Rojas to be a. I need Rojas to be a 233 hitter. I need him to steal me 40 bases. If he can bet. I'm Twelve home you, runs. If he could, if he could get into the two thirties, they'll be yeah. in good shape. Mm -hmm. But going back to your original question, Matt, um, I believe Dombrowski's biggest um, biggest move this year. He has to have a right-handed bat with power that can come off the bench. He has well. to have a. He has to have a power hitter in that dugout. A lot of lefties. A lot of lefties. Yeah. Yeah. So the the de facto Reese Hoskins, who, yes. you know, people felt like, you know, he couldn't play first base, but you really got to get a guy in that's really like a DH and just say, yeah. hey, you know, we're struggling tonight. Uh, we got runners at uh, first and second with two outs. Um, it's the bottom of the seventh or, you know, bottom of or yep. top of the eighth. Uh, you know, we need this guy to come in and slug and hit, hit one out the park or at least give us a double. Right. They got to find out who that guy is. But there's not a lot out there. But, you know, that could be something that you see in June or somebody that they pick up at the uh, deadline. But you're... I, I believe pretty much because of where they're at financially. Um, this is pretty much who you're going to see. But it's all about it's all about Bryce staying healthy. And you feel good about them uh, making it all the way if Bright if they can get if they can get Bryce all season. All the way saying World Series. Yeah, all the all the way, all the way, all the way to the parade. <laughs> no, I still think they can be. I still think they'll be one of the best wild card teams. It's just yeah. hard to beat the Braves in a regular season because their pitching, just they're, between their pitching and their hitting, that just works perfectly during the regular season. Um, but again, it just depends on who who they get as far as that extra bat or you know that extra power um, off the bench. Um, I think their bullpen is going to be uh, key as well, and I thought the, I thought their best offseason move was resigning Nola. We talked about that at nauseum last year. Absolutely, but I think that was their best offseason move because look at it now. You can't replace that. Yeah, it wasn't a it was not a great um, free agent pitch starting pitcher market. So yep. it was incumbent of them. And I, I tried to tell people that all the time. Oh, yeah, you know, he don't want, again, he don't want too much money. You know, this, that, and the third. You can't find a start. They didn't have a, they didn't have a fifth starter. So why would you get rid of your second starter? Yeah. Unless you're going to really be trusting Christopher Sanchez. 
to yeah. You know, I mean, he's he's your de facto fifth starter, which is fine. But you know, fifth starters are interchangeable. But who was going to be your second starter? I don't think you're just going to move up Tymon Walker, even though he he no. pitched well for the most part. You're not going to move up um, workhorse, but he was getting tagged. Yeah, but you're not going to move. You're and you're not going to move up uh, Ranger uh, Suarez. So neither of those guys are someone who I envisioned. I, I don't think the Phillies would envision to be their second starter anyway. So they, they just had to resign. Yeah. Wow. More on that another time, OJ. Thank you for making time. If you liked what you heard, uh, people who are listening, please uh, go rate and subscribe. Give OJ a follow. With the universal handle is OJ Philly. Uh, and it's OJ Spivey, the journalist over on Facebook. That's right, OJ. That's correct. And I'm on threads as well. Getting better with threads. Be with me. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's the transition. It's the it's the new world uh, of all, all these. And then they got the Fediverse. People are being able to have their stuff read on threads from other. It's all interesting. Fascinating world we're living in. Yeah, that, that's the one that I have to. Uh... That's the one that I that I have to try to master, so I work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening. We'll be back soon another time. Thanks. You know, I don't know how a day gets any better than being named to your first all-star team and then going for a career high 51. Put this put this day and night in a nutshell for me. Oh, man, it's, it's been a great night. I mean, it's been wonderful. Um, it's funny. I'm trying to watch the, the selection or whatever, and uh, I can't even, my mom and Joel, they keep FaceTiming me. I can't even watch the selection. I don't even know if they said my name or not.